Okay, pop quiz time, shall we? Um, America, 5% of the world's population, 25% of its what? You're all right, but I heard pollution, greenhouse gases, a whole bunch of other things like that, of that nature. And that's right, but I, I, that's not what I'm interested in right now. So, gee, <laughs> why is she talking about prisons? Is this an environmental lecture? Um, yes, somewhere along the lines in American you know, culture and economies, prisons became really great business. So remember this cute little guy. Right? And the fact that you know, now we know that proximity to fossil fuel emissions actually cause learning disabilities and growing young minds. Um, that is absolutely true. Uh, ta -da! And so remember, you know, garbage and prisons, actually two of our largest growth industries. And, um, but building you know, coal plants in China, also, when you think about it, they, they are linked. The fact that so many you know, of our manufacturing jobs are actually exported you know, overseas, in particular to China, um, outsourced there. And, the, and we know the high cost to the environment that, burnt, that building two burning coal-fired power plants each and every week does to the environment. Many of us do not think about what, that, you know, what the loss of manufacturing jobs actually means to the guy on the block you know, in poor communities where a manufacturing base was the difference between people actually having, it was often their entry into the middle class and keeping them there. You know, as opposed to it being, you know, just, uh, or people like going into the kind of illicit activity that we see happening. And we know that, you know, pollution and poverty is in the states, and especially in, you know, in larger urban areas, we find that it is poverty that often leads people, you know, to a lot of illicit activity. Because many of the offenses are not like huge violent offenses. Like if there's, and you'll find that many people are not, um, making huge amounts of money, you know, selling drugs. They're just not. And I do believe that if people had more access to decent jobs, in particular green jobs, we would also have less people going to jail. Because honestly, think about the fact that both prisons and pollution, they fuel a pollution-based economy that punishes more, most, the people who did the least to produce it. And it also fuels a prison economy that none of us can even be proud of. So to that end, one of the things that, that we did back in uh, our community was create the, some kind of projects uh, that could show that you can actually alleviate poverty and remediate the environment at the same time. One of those projects was the Eco Industrial Center. And uh, it's a collection of businesses that use recycled materials as raw materials. My community is, is really uh, an epicenter for many of the recycling-based uh, re recyclers in, and recycled uh, facilities in our community. And so what we wanted to do was create a collection of businesses that use recycled materials as their raw materials and also do it on a site that has both barge and rail access so you can use those kinds of less polluting sources for transport instead of just you know, a truck-based you know, diesel-based uh, system as well as you know, the bottom line is much of these things or bottom line is all of this stuff is already here. So we wanted to create opportunities that would allow it to much of it to be reused, creatively reused, and turned into the kind of value-added products that actually have a real market. So we're mitigating solid waste and you know, creating the kind of jobs that our community desperately needs. We're one of the poorest congressional districts in all of the United States. In New York City, you know, one of the richest cities in the world, and this is what we have, you know, a mile, you know, a couple miles away from the financial district. And um, so creating these jobs was not just like this little thing that we wanted to do. I mean, this was the difference between community, you know, our people in our community actually developed the kind of lives that they wanted to lead or not. However, my lovely city decided that on that same site, what they thought would actually make a really great amount of sense was building a 2,000 bed jail on that same site. And under the guise of, well, you know, so many people from the South Bronx, you know, actually end up in the criminal justice system. We want to make it easier for their families to actually get to go see them. How about you make it easier for them not to go there in the first place? By giving them a job, by helping them be a productive member of society, by giving the kind of green jobs that actually can support our quality of life and remediate the environment at the same time. Well, 
So that was a really kind of difficult um, place for us to be, I gotta tell you. Oh, and especially since <laughs> my, my dear city had also, like so many cities around the, the country and around the world, you know, creating sustainability plans, and you know, ours is called Plan NYC, and um, I was like, well, maybe they think that those 2,000 beds, you know, are actually like part of their affordable housing strategy. Since they expect us there any old way, not so sure. But anyway, but the whole idea, you know, for someone like us and for reasonable people who reasonable people who want to see the best for everybody, 